Welcome to Dawn, and the movie begins with a little dude watching a short film about an adventure going to this place called Paradise Falls with a bunch of dogs to bring back a super rare undiscovered bird alive to show all his science friends how cool he is. He's like, whoa, bro, then he runs off playing and finds this old raggedy shitty house with a female child inside of it that has the same passion for this dude Charles Munch uh, explorer guy as this little kid. She's a bit creepy but kind, and after she breaks his arm... She... She breaks into his house at night. That is totally normal. I see no red flags here. Anyway, she shows him her top secret adventure book where she wants to go to Paradise Falls just like this guy Charles and she's left a bunch of pages empty for her adventure there when she gets there. Then she makes some promise to take them there when they grow up. No pressure. And she leaves and because he's a dude, the power of boners is super strong so he grows up to marry her. And we start a montage of their life together where they buy the fucked up house and immediately get to work fixing it up. They don't even take their wedding clothes off. Do you know how uncomfortable not to mention dangerous it is to work in a wedding dress, you fucking shit beans? Anyway, they fix up the house. We find out their names are Ellie and Carl. Nice. No promises on sticking to them though. They turn the house into the gay dream house of their childhood. He needs to do more cardio. He sells balloons. She's a bird person. Then they decide to make bibs together but turns out her baby oven is kaput. Either that or his piss pump supplies lackluster baby mix. But I do think it's her ovaries though. Point is, Bebe is a no-go and she depresso as pressure over that. So to cheer her up, he suggests saving up to go to Paradise Falls finally. But problemo after problemo cucks them from doing that. Stop breaking bones, fucking Carl. Also, if you really want to speed this process along a bit, you should look into shifting your career from selling balloons to something a bit more lucrative. Might I suggest meth. Continuing with the montage, they grow old together and forget the whole Paradise Falls ordeal, but Roblox man after years and years and years remembers it and I guess he has the money now so he buys plane tickets to surprise Ellie but oh, hold on, Paradise Falls is in Venezuela bro do you know how dangerous Venezuela is? Doesn't matter cause Ellie's sick and eventually she dies. Pretty sad shit, apparently lots of people cried. I didn't but I think that's probably cause I had no soul, just take the internet's word for it, it was pretty sad. On to present now movie time, Carlito goes about his sad daily routine for us to find out that his neighborhood has been turned into a concrete jungle and some business fucker wants to buy his house and Mr. Potato Head comes over like boss man's willing to offer double his last offer for your property. Oh, is he? Let me talk to him. Hey, faggot! Yeah, gay vampire looking ass bitch. You can kiss my brick little ass, boy. Yeah, I'm not with him. You can have my house when I'm dead. He goes inside and after a little while he gets a knock on his door from this little killer bean looking ass dude named Russell. Your boy Scott and Carl's just like, no, and shuts the door, but then... Opens the door again, turns out Russell wants to get his assisting the elderly badge and won't leave Carl alone. So Blockface makes up the story about this annoying creature snipe thing, alright, and tells him to go find it if he wants to help him and he'll sign his thing for him. You know, if you really wanted the kid off your back that bad, you could have just signed the paper that said that he helped you and just be done with it and write how he helped you by avoiding a headache and leaving me alone. I thought old people were supposed to be wise. So dumbass kid goes out to find the snipe and Bulldozer comes along and backs up into Carl's mailbox and Mark Zuckerberg tries to help, like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, don't touch that! I can fix it, go steal someone's data, cunt, I can help! Ah! He has a tennis ball at the end of that cane, right? How the fuck does it do so much damage? I guess it's possible, but still. Mark's pussy face is bleeding, and since this is the great US of A, we get lawsuits, baby! Fuck yeah! Can you smell that? It's freedom, motherfucker! Queer vampire sues his ass and gets the house and forces his Carl to go into a retirement home. You know, maybe if Carl didn't run away like a bitch and just apologize right then and there, and then they wouldn't have this problem, but I doubt it, because, you know, this is land of McDonald's. They will salivate at the whiff of a lawsuit. That night, he's told to pack up his shit to go to a retirement home next day, but stumbles upon Ellie's old adventure book, so he looks at it and then and looks at the old people home brochure like Faggot shit. Ooh, a toy. And next day when the retirement home people come, he releases the Kraken. A shit ton of balloons rise up and rip the house from the ground and he flies away. Now obviously, this is impossible. Ripping a house from his foundations by a bunch of balloons is just a tremendous amount of horse shit. But who cares? He flies through the city and sets sail for Paradise Falls. Wee! And he sits down peacefully in his chair, but then... Turns out to be Russell. You see, he thought he found the snipe and followed under the porch. It turns out to be just a tiny mouse. And then the house took off and here we are. However, I have a question. He said he was hiding under the porch. So where, 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 where the fuck is this kid in these images? And also later on, we find out that Russell can't climb for shit. So this is cat piss right here. Anyway, he lets him in. Kid's annoying. He fantasizes about killing him. Then he tries to lower the house by cutting off some balloons from this fireplace where they're all attached to the house. But then they approach a cumuloid nim bitch, all right? That's a cloud, storm cloud. They go inside it and plates crack, shit falls. And he's like, no, my stuff. And we cut to later when he titled his stuff down and he's passed out there. And Russell steered the house to South America using his wilderness explored DPF that he immediately loses. And Carl doesn't believe that they're in South America. So he takes the bird down to get the kid home and they pass by some rocks and he's like, what the hell is that? And they crash into the ground and fall off and save the house from flying off a cliff. By the way, this guy, this old frail old man, is supposed to have all his bones shattered and or dislocated. And he's gonna keep doing shit like this and be completely fine afterwards. So I'm just gonna pretend he's some sort of invincible mythological god or something and just move on, okay? So the fog lifts and he sees that they're super close to Paradise Falls and the final resting place that he wants to put his house in. And cause Carl has sausage arms and can climb, he decides to walk his house over there. By the way, if Russell could have made it up, he wanted him to hoist him up. That's why a 12 year old kid should hoist a fully grown 
single man up. Yeah, that was never gonna happen. Also, now that he has decided to walk the house over there and set it down, he has in effect given up on the idea of taking Russell back home. Just saying. So dipshit Russell decides to help and they have to get to moving quick because the healing will the balloons in three states. They wear the house like a backpack and Russell takes his shit in the jungle and with the help of some chocolate, he finds a big gay ostrich. Brings it over like I found the snipe. Listen, kid, that's- Oh my god, th there's no such thing as a snipe, dude. Can we keep it? Of course not. They keep it. Then they meet a dog with a collar on it that allows it to speak. Yes, he's a very good boy, okay? His name's Doug. And he has been tasked by his master to find a bird and it turns out that the big gay ostrich, Kevin, all right, that's his name, Kevin Malone, is the bird he was looking for. He's like, can I take your bird as prisoner, please? Please, please, oh please be my prisoner. Then we cut to another pack of dogs, also searching for Kevin Bacon, and they check their colors to see that dog has a bird on their little tiny screens that have GPS location. What? How the fuck is this technology available 80 years ago? Whatever, I guess 1920s fucking movie science. Haven't used that one in a while. Anyway, they contact the good boy and see he has the bird and run to his location. Meanwhile, the duckster has made Carl his new master because he loves him so much, but Carl is running dangerously low on fucks to give, and he wants to get rid of both him and Kevin. So he throws a ball and some chocolate and... Both Doug and Kevin run after them respectively, and he tries to run away far, far away, but that does not work at all. That's no good because they still find him. I mean, you're not that hard of a target to find, you dumb old fuck. You literally have a floating house attached to you. Anyway, they camp under the shelter of the house at night from the rain, and it is revealed that Russell's dad doesn't give a crap about him. And next day, Kevin's gone, but not really. He's on top of the house, stockpiling food to take it to his kids. That's right, Kevin is a girl. It's official. Kevin is a gender neutral name. If you don't agree, eat a dick. Up has spoken. So Kevin takes some food and says goodbye and goes off to his bibbies, but his ostrich spidey sense tingles, and we cut back to the floating house gang where the dog pack jumps onto them and asks Doug, where is the bird? Ah yes, the bird is the word. Ah yes, I could see how you would think I have the bird. Uh, tomorrow. Come back tomorrow and I will have the bird. Yes. Dumb bitch, you lost it! Then the dogs force the gang to come with them to their master as prisoners and we see Kevin on top of the house. Okay, I know this once, but how the fuck does it get up there, especially without getting noticed? No way it can fly. Ugh, whatever. They take him to a cave and lots of dogs show up. Then Charles Munz shows up. Yep, he's still alive and he's still here looking for this fucking bird. He takes one look at their mode of transportation and decides that they're not a threat and car goes Holy bazookas, that's Charles Munson, oh my god! Oh boy, I don't give a fuck. So Charles invites them in for dinner and they park their house next to his big fuck off blimp and he trains the dog to be servants and make dinner for him and do everything for him and he has not left this place because he's still looking for this bird but he can't catch it because he keeps escaping into this labyrinth place. I've lost so many dogs in there, blah blah, people try to come here and steal my discovery, blah blah blah. I just want to mention that Charles must be at least 80 years old and the fact that he might be having sex with his dogs is not too far-fetched of a theory, I'm just saying. Anyway, shit dick suspicion keeps arising and they both see Kevin on top of the house and Carl uses this as a distraction to get out of the blimp and takes his house and the dogs go after them so Jesus takes the wheel sorry Kevin takes the wheel and a bunch of balloons pop while Doug tries to help them out and slow down the rest of the dogs but he almost gets thrown off a cliff himself then they jump this gap or rather float across this gap and make it to safety but Kevin has been bitten and Russell's like we gotta get it back to his babies this fucking kid all right let's go so they walk through the night to get to the labyrinth where his babies are and no way the balloons aren't popping here they're floating at branch level come on this is donkey dung I'm mixing it up here with the fucking you know the animals and the feces you see what I'm doing here anyway they get to the entrance of the main and the fastest healing bird ever limps over there but Munz shows up you see he tracked him down using Doug's collar because it has a GPS track remember he traps Kevin and tries to burn down and calls house balloons popping and shit and forced between freeing Kevin and saving his house he chooses his house and then swoops in and takes the bird then Russell goes you gave away Kevin I didn't set out for this shit all right? I'm not your master too and he calls Doug a bad dog now listen here you racket old piece of shit you take that back cunt anyway he decides to take his barely airborne house to the falls with or without the help of fucking Russell he gets there parks it there kind of crooked ain't him and Russell goes fucking you're a dick I hope you get polio dude goes in the house tidies up a bit <laughs> spell like titties <laughs> Alright, focus. No time, no time. Okay. Guy sits down in his chair, checks Ellie's adventure book to see that she has filled out the pages of the stuff I'm gonna do section with pictures of the two of them, and for some reason this is more touching to me than the montage in the beginning, but I still didn't cry. I'm I will not cry. I'm I'm soulless, goddammit, I'm strong! I'm so <laughs> Then he decides to help Russell get back Kevin, but Russell has helped himself to some balloons and leaf blower to go save Kevin himself. And he's like, no! Then he tries to move his house, but it won't budge and goes, ah, fuck this chair. Oh. And he gets the idea to shed weight from the house to make it float, and he does that, and he finally takes off enough weight to make the house take off once more. And Doug shows up at the porch, and he's a good boy now, yay. He was supposedly hunting on the porch as well, but I didn't see him when it took off. Does this porch have a secret compartment? How do porches work? I don't know. Russell finds a blimp somehow, goes inside, and gets caught, and then Dick Mitchum does the classic, I'll tie the protagonist to a chair and let some weird fucking mechanism kill him really slowly so he has more time to escape move then Clark 
Clarl. It's not Clarl. Then Car closes in on the blimp and sees the kid being lowered to his death and he goes to save him. I don't know how the balloons aren't hitting the bottom of the blimp and popping to be honest. And aren't they supposed to be having trouble breathing? How high up are they? It doesn't matter. Carl tries to keep Bean Boy safe but Bean Boy wants to help so Carl and Doggo go inside and distract other Doggos with the ball and free Kevin while Russell frees himself and fucks up big time. Mint Man sees dipshit Russell and sends flying dogs after him which is funny and hilarious stuff because dog fighters. I get it. But now I'm trying to shoot out the fucking balloon and said they aim for the tiny target that is the kid. Fucking dumb bitches. But you know what am I complaining about? There are fucking dogs flying planes using chew toys. Why am I even... <laughs> Moving on. Munz fights Carl and they fight each other while Doug runs away from the other dogs and humiliates the alpha and accidentally becomes the alpha dog himself. You know, like Toothless and other dragons, he's the leader now, okay? Then Carl and the super healing bird climb the side of a blimp and try to knock off Munz, but he survives and Russell finally learns how to climb rope. The dog fighters crash off because Squirrel, by the way, the fight Carl had with Munz, he gave him a good whack on the head with a stick, right? And Munz didn't bleed while Mark had a fucking explosive period in his head. How's that possible? Doesn't matter, I guess Munz is fucking built different. So Roadrunner and Minecraft reunite with Airbutt on the roof and Killer Bean brings the house over, but Musket Man shoots some balloons off with the rifle and the thing slides off, falls down a bit and starts sliding off the blimp, but Carl the Norse God gets a hold of it from the fucking garden hose and he keeps it on board cause he's fucking Zeus or something. And Munz tries to break in the house and get the fucking bird and he does that and then Carl gets a brainwave right? He's like, chocolate! And Russell and Doug hold on to Kevin, he shoots through the fucking window. The garden hose says adios, Munz falls to his death but motherfucking Carl got a death grip on that motherfucking hose man. And he saves these idiots while he sees his house float down into the abyss. Uh, is that an abyss? No, it's just the sky. Never mind. We transition to Kevin getting back to his kid then Carl assumes ownership of the airship and leadership of the dogs, that's a lot of ships there. And they get back to their town or city for Russell's badge receiving ceremony and his dad ain't there but Carl is and he gives him the Ellie badge. And I don't know if this bitch is his mom, stepmom, maid, caretaker or whatever but she seems hella okay with the fact that the kid's been missing for three fucking days. Also what the hell is wrong with this kid? His cat died or something? Is he constipated? Doesn't matter. Movie ends with them parking their blimp on top of a ice cream shop cause that's fine, that's legal, no problem with that. And his old house very conveniently resting in the correct spot on Paradise Falls which you might call luck but I call it Camel Dookie. This movie gets eight schnozes out of eight Cessna 172s.